Hi, I'm Mark, and this is My Electric Life. Hi, and welcome to the first in my series of how to decarbonise your home. Now, whether your aim is to decarbonise or just to save energy, you need to take a two-pronged approach here. The first prong is to eliminate losses in the system. And what do I mean by losses? I mean anywhere where heat can leak in or out of your home, be that through poor insulation in the ceiling or the walls, or poor seals on the windows and doors, or maybe it's just that 25-year-old clunker of an air conditioner that's guzzling energy at twice the rate of its modern equivalent. All of these things are adding to the energy use and hence the carbon footprint of your home. But also, they're costing you money. And the cheapest kilowatt hour you'll ever find is the one you didn't use, right? So replacing that air conditioner, you might think, well, why replace it if it ain't broke? but it's costing you money every day because it's so inefficient and a modern one will save you money and probably pay for itself in a year or two. So consider those things. Now having achieved that, the second prong is going to be electrify everything. You've probably heard this said in the media, it's often said by scientists and by policy makers, particularly when they're talking about decarbonizing industry. But what's good for industry is also good for the home. So think of every appliance that you have in your house and think about the ones that are powered by fossil fuels. So this could be your lawnmower or it could be your gas barbecue. It could be your hot water service or it could of course be your car. Now, if you replace those things with the electrical equivalent, then you can actually have your whole home and your lifestyle powered by electricity. And of course, the next step is really simple. You just need to find a green source of electricity. And having done that, putting those two things together, you've now decarbonized. So the rest of this series is actually more about looking at different alternatives, alternative appliances and technologies that can be used to get you off fossil fuel. And also, obviously, I'll be talking about finding a green source of energy. Now, coming back to the first prong around leakages, there's something that you need to consider if you're building a home, as I was right now, and that is what we call passive solar design. So this is all about how the house sits on the land. When I bought this block of land, I was actually in two minds and I nearly talked myself out of it because it's what we call a battle axe block, which means it has a long, long driveway and it sits behind blocks in the front. And that all adds cost to the construction process because you have to have a much longer driveway and longer services. And added to that, there's also a cutting on the south side of the block and that needed retaining walls, which are also expensive. So, Adding all this up in my head, I thought, oh, I don't really know if I want to buy this block. But there was one thing that kept me thinking, well, yes, this is the one to get. And that is the way the block is situated. My house is a single story ranch style house. And there's really only way, one way you can site that on this block of land. And in doing that, what it means is you finish up with the windows on the long side of the house where the living areas are facing north or just slightly east of north and the back garden finishes up being to the east. Now this is ideal from a passive solar design point of view. Think about this, in the winter when the sun is low in the sky, it may only rise to 50 degrees above the horizon, then those sun's rays are going to come through the glass windows on the north side of the house and penetrate deep into the house interior. And that keeps the house warm in winter and means that I don't have to spend money on artificial heating. Conversely, in the summer, when the sun is directly overhead, the sun's rays are beating down on the roof of the house, but they're not penetrating through the glass on the north side. And that's helped by having eaves, obviously, on, on those walls. 
So this means that this, it, as long as you have good insulation in that ceiling, then that radiant heat from the sun is not going to penetrate into your house. And so you'll spend a lot less money on keeping the house cool in the summer. So this is an important thing to consider if you're in the process of choosing land and building a house. It's not so relevant if you've already got a house. Uh, you, you have what you have and you have to work with what, you, what you've got. And so the rest of these videos will talk about other things that you can introduce. But I just wanted to mention that for those that are building a house. And while I'm on the subject, hot water. So I'm making a video about hot water as well, but I wanna to mention too, if you're building at the moment, it's very popular at the moment to choose what they call instant hot water services, which are generally powered by gas. And that's because gas is very efficient at heating water in a, in a hurry. However, if you choose one of those, then you're tying yourself to a fossil fuel and a fossil fuel that is going up in price quite dramatically over the last few years and it's on an upward trajectory. But also you're committing yourself to being tethered to a fossil fuel for the lifetime of that hot water service. And we're, you're probably talking 10 to 15 years for that. So when I chose my hot water, I will tell you about this more in a future video, but I have just your basic hot water tank with a boiler element in the tank. It's the most basic hot water service you can get, and that means it's also the cheapest you can get. And this mates very well with a solar PV system. So I'll be discussing this in a future video, but I wanted to mention it here because it comes into play when you're designing your house and talking to your builder, tell them that that's what you want. You just want the basic electric hot water system. It doesn't have to be gas and it doesn't have to be a heat pump. It could be, but uh, in my case it's not, and I'll explain why in my future video. So stick to your basic hot water service and you won't go wrong there. Well, that's it for this video, and I hope you found some of this information useful, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments or ideas, please put them in the comments section. I'm always happy to read those, and I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.